offer a different perspective on winemaking, we've come to a vintner on the western slope of the Rocky Mountains. So this is our winery. This small winery has found a profitable synergy between winemaking and tourism. The Two Rivers Winery brings together the winery, event center, and hotel. Each tank has their own individual thermostats, and this is all state-of-the-art fermentation. The hotel, and uh, you've got the winery, but these are not uh, two independent businesses. The, 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 the links between the two are quite important to you in terms of the profitability of the whole project. They, they are. In fact, uh, the Chateau operations was built with, a, with the, the sole purpose in mind of drawing people in to taste wine. When you have an event of 150 people that are tasting wine and having a pleasant experience, then uh, they remember it, and that is the brand recognition that we seek, or that any winery actually seeks, um, is brand recognition. You want to be able to have enough people taste your wine that when they go in and they're considering another product and they focus in on Two Rivers, they'll go, oh, I remember my good experience that I had and purchased Two Rivers wines. This illustrates how, as far as possible, small firms in competitive markets will attempt to differentiate their product. Um, there must be economies of scale for large producers in this business. So some of your competitors are way bigger than you are. How do you cope in a market where you don't get the economies of scale that some of your competitors are getting? A larger winery or a larger business reacts very slow and we react very quickly to opportunity. And that gives us the edge over. So I sort of look at it, there is an economy of scale, but that economy of scale has to do with the smallness and our abilities to pay more attention to that which we're doing and therefore react more quickly to that which we're doing than a monolith that, has, that, that is taking um, you know, a committee to, to get things done. As a small business, Two Rivers is able to adapt quickly to changing market conditions. In addition, they're able to take advantage of tax breaks and accounting rules that favour the small, entrepreneurial business. Governments often intervene in markets through a variety of means. In this case, it's a tax break. However, for farmers in the European Union, governments intervene in markets often through a direct subsidy. Sometimes we find that in markets the supply curve shifts because of agricultural subsidies. So for example in the EU, agricultural subsidies are common. The use of that agricultural subsidy encourages suppliers to produce more of a commodity. The supply curve alters. We have a different linear equation and that means we'll have a different equilibrium. Let's use linear equations to see how a subsidy affects the equilibrium price and how it affects the producer's income. A government subsidy means that suppliers receive an income from the state in addition to the price. The subsidy varies from product to product and from time to time. They also vary in type. For example, subsidies are very common in agricultural industries. There are some fixed payments. There are some subsidies which are so much per unit. There are some which are a proportion of the value of the output. Sometimes the subsidy comes in the form of tax reliefs to the business. We'll illustrate here with a per unit subsidy. So using our original supply curve, we now have making the assumption that the subsidy is five euros per unit, the supply curve becomes P, the price that the supplier receives, plus five, the subsidy which he gets for each unit from the government, equals half QS plus 20. So now we can calculate the new equilibrium quantity following the introduction of the subsidy. Our demand curve is unaffected, so that's still given as P equals minus 2QD plus 40. We've now got our new supply curve, 
P plus 5 equals a half QS plus 20. We'll rearrange the supply curve so that we get P alone on the left hand side. P equals half QS plus 15. Now in equilibrium, quantity supplied equals quantity demanded. So we have now that supply, a half Q plus 15, will equal demand minus 2Q plus 40. Collecting the Qs onto the left hand side, we have 5 over 2Q equals 25, so Q equals 10. So there we've been able to calculate the effect on output of a given subsidy. Not surprisingly, output for the industry is now higher. But what of the price? Who gets the benefit of the subsidy? Is it the producer? Or is it the consumer in the form of lower prices? Well, we can now find the new equilibrium price following the subsidy. And we can do that by substituting into any of the original equations 1, 2 or 3. Let's use 1. P equals minus 2QD plus 40. P equals therefore minus 20 plus 40. So P equals 20. And you notice that the equilibrium price is reduced as a result of the subsidy, but it's reduced by less than the full extent of the subsidy. Competition amongst suppliers receiving the subsidy obliges them to pass on some of the subsidy in the form of lower prices, but they retain some of it as increased income. If you like, you could sketch the new equilibrium on a supply and demand curve, but it's not necessary. We can use linear equations to work out changes in values when we consider changes such as the introduction of subsidies. In the context of subsidies, we can work out where the benefit will go, to the supplier or to the consumer. Our producer will know how much he's going to benefit from subsidies. And governments can also know in advance what the effects of the subsidies in the marketplace are likely to be.